have someone who uh, has a lot of fabric and you really can't see a body under there. So this is where we have to start understanding anatomy really well. In this case, because I'm just having you guys trace this, go ahead and just trace the dress as is. And then in another class, we'll talk a little bit more about what it means to understand the body underneath there. So again, starting off with the head. Now in this case, she's kind of got a little bit of a, an upward perspective. So her head probably goes a little bit past where her chin is going. And then of course you see the nose. And since we're looking upwards, you're gonna see more of the nostril holes as opposed to what I drew on the last one. And again, because we're tracing this, this is a really good way to start paying attention to how does the mouth look different when I'm looking up at the face as opposed to straight on. Her neck is kind of coming down from here a little bit more. We've got some hair to hide it, so I'm having to guess again. But her shoulders are a little bit more pronounced here. And I'm just drawing in some of her collarbone. She's got a dress on. You can kind of see a little bit of the shape. So this is where I am gonna need a little bit of help. Looks like she's got her arm in another sweater or jacket. So you can't even see her full arm. But where the waist ends is really where I wanna pay attention to. Because the waist is right about here. It's really important if you can't see the bottom of this, drawing that straight line all the way down. Looks like the bottom of her skirt is hitting right about there. And then let's double check this again. You really can't see any of her feet. But we know that if she's gonna be standing and not tilting over, she's gotta have at least one foot on this side and then one foot on this side, right? And so because she's got all this skirt out here, I'm gonna just draw a couple things, a skirt here, but I'm gonna kind of guess she needs a pelvis here. She's probably gonna be standing with her feet out a little bit. Oops. And then her other foot is probably gonna be anchoring her a little bit more. Now you guys will see that every person is gonna have their own style. I do tend to draw a little bit more of a realistic body, a kind of a chunkier body. And there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Each person is gonna have their own style. Each person's gonna have their own take and exaggeration of little things. The main important thing for costume designers is that you are anatomically creating something that looks real, looks like a human, doesn't look too cartoony because the biggest thing that you don't want a director to look at and say is this costume looks like a Looney Tunes costume. If that is what you're going for on the stage, then that's a different story. And you can totally communicate that in the costume rendering without making the body and the human that's underneath of it look super cartoon. It's really good to start practicing all of this tracing. So you're really understanding the face and the movement and the arms. I typically start with the, the basic blocks of the body first, but this is where we're starting to really flesh out some of those body parts. So where did the breasts hit in relation to the neck? Where does the crotch hit in relation to the breasts? How high up is the knee from the hip bone? Where is the widest hip bone part versus where we have our waist? You know, how far out does that go? And again, try and keep an eye on what shapes these are creating. I have my trapezoid here. 
And then when you go to the actual crotch, there's another kind of triangle there. And usually it goes down a little bit more. You know, you have a little bit more of a kind of underwear shape, which is why a lot of times you'll see the underwear drawing line for figure drawing. And then where does the leg come out of? You know, it comes out of this cone or tube, if you were to imagine this as a 3D tube, as opposed to coming out of the side here or something where it doesn't quite fit into that, that body shape. As humans, our flesh goes in and out of other things. So this is where it's really important to understand that. Now, when we go to drawing the fabric, I'm just tracing here. And this is from years and years of doing this, which is why it's fast for me. If you take a little more time to just get that outer shape, I just want it loose. It really should be quick just to get that idea down. And she's got a little bit more of the skirt. I've obviously drawn the legs in there where they are not in there, just so you can see the body underneath. In a real drawing, of course, most of that will be erased and then you'll have all of your skirt underneath there. But this is sort of a good place to start and just keep practicing with this. The best practice I would say is to just knock 10 of these out a day. That sounds like a lot, but don't give yourself more than five minutes to just finish from head to toe. And it just takes tracing and tracing and tracing. A lot of costume designers do use croquis like this where they just have the body underneath so they can get the shape and the anatomy right. And then they change all the clothing that's on top. So this is totally acceptable to use a body that already exists, a real body so that the proportions are correct and that it looks like a real human. All right. So that'll be your first assignment for sketching. It'll just be practicing how to trace the body, how to get that outline underneath. And remember that plumb line is really important. That's always the thing that anchors our body so that we're not tilting over to one side. Because if all of your feet are over on one side, that's when the body looks kind of tilted like this. So you can kind of see like if her body is off to the side and she's not straight up and down, it makes for a very unstable drawing. Great. All right. Thanks guys. See you next week.